Paul Feig's latest film, The School for Good and Evil, is now on Netflix. Let's see if it's worth your time. Hey everybody, my name's Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services like Netflix. If you guys are like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more up and coming content. Best friends Sophie and Agatha find themselves on opposing sides of an epic battle when they're swept away into an enchanted school where aspiring heroes and villains are trained to protect the balance between good and evil. Paul Feig has a really interesting career. Some films I absolutely love that he has directed, like Bridesmaids. Some of them are just very mediocre, like Ghostbusters, but his style is definitely there within the school for good and evil. This was a conflicting film for me. On one hand, I like the story, but on the other hand, part of it just did not work. The story between Sophie and Agatha as they are brought to this enchanted school for good and evil and learn to be part of a storyline for good and evil, like princesses and villains, and both of them feel like they are placed in the wrong school, where we have Sophie played by Sophia Ann Carrasso, who is placed in the school for evil, but she thinks that she needs to be in the school for good. We have Agatha played by Sophia Wiley, who doesn't think she should be there in the first place. So a lot of the film is dedicated to why I should not be here, and then I need to be in the other school. And that takes up a lot of the first half of the movie. It's just constant conversations. I don't need to be here. I don't belong here. This school is a joke. I'm not going to follow the rules. I need to figure out every way I can to get out here. It seems to just be a little bit repetitive with the story between Sophie and Agatha with them realizing that they need to be somewhere else. And the film is two hours and 28 minutes. For a family adventure film, two hours and 28 minutes seems to be a little long. And at times it feels very drawn out and, rep and repetitive with its story between the two girls. But I do like a lot of this world building for the school between the good and evil and the teachers and everybody involved. We have Charlize Theron in the film, Carrie Washington as well. They are the headmistresses for each of their school and they play up the parts very well. Charlize Theron is, seems very evil. She does a pretty good job at playing the villain role. You know, she was in The Fate of the Furious. I like her in a villain role and she was great in here. And Kerry Washington was very bubbly in the role as the headmistress for the good school. I liked a lot of the world building, exploring the school, exploring classes, different teachers, different students, and how things are run. And I like the the structure of all of that. And then a little bit of the history for the school of good and evil as well. And its history, I liked exploring a lot of that and how it's playing nicely into the current timeline with Sophie and Agatha and how they're affected by certain moments from the past. So the story is pretty good. The story I was interested in. That's what made me want to finish the film is the progression of Sophie and her realizing that she wants to be in this school for good, but she may actually need to be in the school for the bad. And the film does get very cliche. It does get very predictable towards the end, but it embraces it with its stories of princesses and witches and villains. It takes all of the elements from classic princess stories and villain stories and brings them in here. True love's first kiss, being a witch, being evil. That's what it's supposed to do. And it embraces it and tells a fun story with it. The one thing I disliked about this movie was its humor. It feels so flat and so out of place. The tone of it has a fantasy tone. It feels like a YA adventure, but the humor is just so out of place and not funny that you are immediately taken out of the scene. You could have a scene with a great score and a dramatic scene, and then it's ruined by a troll making a joke or a teacher burping in your face. A lot of Paul Feig's movies 
are comedies and he's taken a lot of what he knows into his film and i just don't think they were placed nicely in here i did not find one joke in here to be funny and most of the time i felt like they were in the wrong spot or really just unnecessary that's my biggest complaint and it seems like it could be a small complaint but it's a lot when you have a film that's two hours and 28 minutes and it's constantly having these jokes that just do not work and are placed poorly in the film, it's hard to get invested in certain sequences. Because the visuals are really good. The action scenes are intense. There's a lot of great exploration of different creatures in the school, but it's all ruined with some of the jokes. Like the jokes are thrown into these action scenes and you just question what's the point just focus on the action scene leave the humor out of it because the tone at times and the the tone at times feel like it's not a comedy it feels like it's a drama at times an adventure film but the humor just makes it for a comedy and it just does not work but for the most part i was invested in the story that progression is very cliche of these characters it's predictable as can be but it embraces it with its story. It's based off of a book and there's several books and they do leave it open for a sequel. So I would be curious to see a sequel for it and maybe tone down the humor just a little bit and focus more on the story and the characters. Sophia and Carasso and Sophia Wiley were really good in their role. They really embraced these performances and uh, I love that progression for Sophia and Carasso's character, Sophie and her becoming good and then becoming evil. And then we have Sophia Wiley as Agatha does not want to be a princess at all. Watching her learn to see what it takes to become a princess, polar opposite characters, polar opposite stories and different sides of the school, watching them do their own thing was fun to watch. So before I give you my score for the school for good and evil, make sure to check out my channel. Here I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, tier lists, all that fun movie related content that you see on YouTube. I do it all here, so hit that subscribe button to get it all in one spot. And if you'd like to see where the school for good and evil ranks amongst all the other 2022 releases I have seen this year, follow me on Letterboxd and there you can find my ranking. I'm gonna go ahead and give the school for good and evil a B minus. Thank you guys for checking my review for the new film by Paul Feig. Have you guys seen it by chance? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming content like this. My name is Just Watch the Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.